Hello and welcome to another complete OCR GCSE PE lesson. This one is on topic 1.2, the structure and function of the muscular system, moving on to the second and final learning objective on the roles of muscle in movement. So since muscles can pull but not push on bones, muscles must work in pairs to ensure that movement in both directions is possible. And a pair of muscles that work together is called an antagonistic pair. As one muscle contracts to initiate the movement, the other one relaxes to allow that movement to occur. So the example I've provided here is the biceps and triceps. As the bicep muscle contracts to create flexion or bend the elbow joint, the tricep muscle on the back of the arm must relax to allow that movement to occur. Now antagonistic pairs are located opposite one another in the body. So other examples include the quadriceps and hamstrings and the pectorals and latissimus dorsi. So the definitions that you need to know are agonist and antagonist. So the agonist, otherwise known as the prime mover, is the muscle in the antagonistic pair that contracts to initiate the movement. The other muscle, the one that relaxes, is called the antagonist muscle. So the antagonist is the muscle that relaxes, allowing the movement to occur. So in this other example here, we've got flexion at the knee joint. The muscle that creates flexion at the knee is the hamstring, so that one's the agonist. And the muscle opposite, which must relax to allow flexion at the knee joint to occur, is the quadricep muscle, so that one is the antagonist. Now the other definition that you need to know is fixator, but in order to explain the role of the fixator muscle, I want to go through the terms origin and insertion first. So muscles are attached to bones at both ends. The origin is the point at which a muscle attaches to a bone that is stable. In other words, it remains stationary or doesn't move when the contraction occurs. The insertion on the other hand is the site at which the muscle attaches to a bone that moves. So in the example of a bicep curl, that would be at the elbow joint, specifically the radius bone in the forearm, whereas the origin would be at the shoulder. Now with this in mind, a fixator muscle is one that stabilizes the origin of the agonist muscle. To put it in context, during a bicep curl, the trapezius muscle stabilizes the origin of the biceps, the scapula, which restricts any unwanted movements at the shoulder joint and ensures that as the bicep muscle contracts, it creates flexion at the elbow and not movement at the shoulder. Okay, so that was everything you need to know on the roles of muscle in movement. But before we finish, we'll just take a look at a couple of questions to put some of this information into context. So the first one is to describe the role of a fixator muscle, which as we just learned is to stabilize a joint as a muscle contracts, restricting any unwanted movements. Next one, figure one shows a footballer after they've kicked a ball. Name one agonist and one antagonistic muscle acting at the knee when performing the action in figure one. So the agonist here, in extending the knee joint is the quadriceps and the antagonist which relaxes to allow that extension at the knee to occur is the hamstrings. Finally, name the leg muscle that contracts during the extension phase of the exercise shown here, and that's of course the quadriceps muscle, and explain how the pair of muscles at the knee work together during the extension phase of that exercise. So the quadriceps and hamstrings work together as an antagonistic pair. The quadriceps are the prime mover or agonist muscles. They contract and shorten to create the movement or initiate the movement, while the hamstrings relax and lengthen to allow the movement to occur. In other words, the hamstrings are the antagonist muscles in the movement shown. Okay, so that was everything on the second and final learning objective on topic 1.2, the structure and function of the muscular system. Join me next time as we make a start on topic 1.3, movement analysis.